dream. You are falling. Lost in the listening distance. As dark locks in. <laughs> Nightfall. Good evening. Tonight we have our cameras loaded and our studio lit for a special session. And all we ask is that your pose be natural. The play by Arlene Esrin is called Deadly Developments. Morning, Paul. Hi, Andre. By the way, it's afternoon. Uh, late session last night. More frisky models. <laughs> Anyway, I'm glad you dropped in. Sure, sure. If you don't, I was coming. Had to close the store? <laughs> well, I would and I wouldn't. I, uh, want to show you something. What you got there? Uh, don't rush me, don't rush me. All right, you tell me what it is. Hmm. 35 mil. It's heavy. Real antique. European? You're getting warm. German. <laughs> hey. It's not a von Hansdorf. Oh, well, you took a little camera history, did you? Pre-war, one of the greatest cameras ever made. Jeez, it's built like a tank. Yeah, it built them to last. But I haven't had time to test it yet. Where the hell did you get it? The guy brought it in yesterday, right off the street. Said he found it in the basement in a house he just moved into, a, in a trunk. Oh, uh, yeah? Did you check it out? With the cops, yeah. It's clean. That's weird. It's surprising to find one outside Europe. You ever see any results? Pictures? No, but I'd sure like to. This machine's a classic. Listen to the boy who took photo arts. Uh, <laughs> Paul, maybe we can... Hold it, Andre. I got a business here. Mm, what's it worth, Paul? Well, I don't really know. I'm trying it out in tomorrow's ad for six fifty. What? In tomorrow's paper? Yeah. Oh, six fifty, eh? Yeah. What if it's rusted tight? Try it out. <laughs> it's like a steel trap. Yeah. I wonder how it shoots. You want to make a deal? Sure. Well, as long as it's in good working condition, okay? Okay. But mechanics only. What do you mean? There's no guarantee on the pictures. Steve! <laughs> Steve, where are you? Steve? Hang on a sec. I'm in here. Right. What are you into? Prints. The car layout, remember yesterday? Oh, yeah. What's with the music? You nearly blew my head off. It's the Carpenters. They were at it right through lunch. <laughs> so you hit out in there? <laughs> yeah. Steve, they could have stripped the place clean. No way. They were really into the band. So, what do you think of the set? Hmm. Definitely creepy. And they cleaned up pretty well. Yeah. I'll get the lights done tonight. Right. Uh, looks like we want lots of lavender gels. Oh, and, uh, guess what? What? Have a look. I stopped off at Paul Gemmel's. Oh, no, not another. Oh, what is it? A Von Hensdorf. Hey. 650. And it looks like it's in great shape. Yeah. Well, what have you got in mind for it? Who knows? Uh, check it out, will you? You bet. It's bound to be in the books. European? German. Probably early 30s. Right. And uh, that takes care of the fun part. What do you mean? They want the session prints for Monday morning. They've got a printer waiting. You mean... Right, Steve-O. You're here for the weekend. As of noon today, you've been on overtime. All for a horror story book cover? You got it. Now, well, let's get at it. Whatever you say, boss. Think of it this way, Steve. The sooner you get the set lit, the sooner you get to play with the Von Hensdorf. You're on. Oh, uh, by the way... You better get your phone messages off the machine. I couldn't hear the thing from the dark room. I don't doubt it. Andre, it's me, Susie. Um, you think I can do it? I'll be there. But boy, am I scared. Good day, sir. Good afternoon. Can I uh, help you with something? Please. You have an advertisement, I believe, in today's Gazette. For a von Hensdorf camera. Yes, I have. Well, I did have. I do hope I'm not too late. To buy it? Well, I sold it yesterday, even before the paper hit the streets. But that was my camera. What? Here. Here's my card. 
I am Felix Rupp. But, but you're a camera. What, what do you mean? It was stolen from me last week. It's not difficult to prove ownership. It's the only von Henstorf in the country. Hmm. I knew they were kind of scarce. Where yeah, did you get it? The guy just uh, brought it in. And you weren't suspicious? Well, look, every week there's a list of uh, stolen cameras from the police. But no von Hensdorf. I did not report it missing. Why not? Then what are you up to, anyway? I simply want my camera back. Like I said, I sold it. Who bought it? Mr. Uh, uh, Rupp, I, I don't like being pushed. Ah, forgive me. I'm overly concerned. You see, I'm a collector of old cameras. Well, if I could be sure your intentions were, uh, as they say, honorable... Which they most certainly are. I might be able to get it back. I have all the papers. Anyway, if there's only one von Hensdorf in the country, it shouldn't be too hard to identify. Hmm? Do you know any collectors, Mr. Gamble? A few. Then you know something of the peculiar... Passion. Yeah. That is to say, if they got to have a certain model of Zeiss icon, they got to have it. Precisely. Even if it means pawning the wife and kids. Mm -hmm. yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Not only do I want the von Hensdorf back at once, I want it back untouched. Untouched? No additions, changes, alterations. Only a fanatic can take proper care of such a unique instrument. Uh, yeah. Well, uh, there, there is, of course, the question of... Uh, Money. Mm. Isn't there always? <laughs> Cash or charge X. I shall repay whoever it is, and no questions asked. You can see my position, eh? I mean, I, I had no way of knowing it was hard. No, here's one hundred dollars for your trouble. Oh, yes. Uh, now, who has the von Henstorff? Uh, his name is uh, Andre Philippe. Professional photographer. How can I get in touch? I'll write down his studio number. Usually there, even on Saturday. Ah, thank you. I trust you will not mention this. No, not a word. And by the way, uh, you did not use the camera, I hope. No, <laughs> didn't even load it. Good, good. Look, um, I know you didn't want the camera tampered with, but uh, what could possibly happen if... Uh, if someone took a few shots, the von Henstorff should only be used by someone who has mastered its peculiar characteristics. Hello? This is your wake-up call, boss. Oh, hi. What time is it? It's high noon, Saturday, and all systems go. <clears throat> Good. Um, what's the weather like? Rain, man. Don't look out the window for at least ten minutes. Not that you get everybody in the mood. <gasps> what do you mean? The session, man. We got a horror session at two, remember? Oh, right. Where are you? The studio. Your faithful servant has braved the elements. And that takes care of the boring part. What do you mean? The von Hensdorf. It's pure gold. Yeah? Yeah. What we have is definitely a piece of punk merchandise. Punk? In the best possible sense. The genuine article. A living antique. It's in the books. I did some instant research. And? Carl von Hensdorf was a highly respected German scientist. He developed the camera in 1935. Just in time for the war. Among other things, yes. Yeah. He was a specialist, a pioneer in hard lens work, and he said... Oh, 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 hold it, Steve. Let me, let me get a cigarette here. Yeah, right. <coughs> hey, shoot. <coughs> Anything to make sure you stay awake, right? Uh, look, I got a lot of notes here. Okay, Watson. go ahead. I'm listening. Well, the von Hensdorf factory was bombed in several air raids. So, no more cameras. Right. And even before the bombings, the company's optical equipment was taken over by the state for telescopes and gun sites. So, uh, they only made a few of them. Well, that's the funny part. The collector's catalog says they manufactured six dozen of them, and all but four were destroyed. They don't say how, or where, or why. So, what we've got is uh, an antique turkey. Oh, au contraire, Andre. This thing works like a charm. It was designed for natural lighting use, but I couldn't resist playing with it on the set last night. And? 
I just got the prints out of the bath, and you would not believe the definition. This thing shoots through shadows like an X-ray. Oh, the textures, man. The oh, textures. okay, okay. I'll, I'll check them out when I get in. Everything's set for the session? Relax, boss. Everything's cool. You have plenty of time for your eggs benedict on your way over. Yeah. <clears throat> By the sounds of things, I'll need them to glue the day together. I kid you not. All systems are go. Uh, you want me to set up the Von Hensdorf for the session? No, I want to play with it first. Get used to it a bit. Well, you're the boss. But it might be just what we need. Yeah? Yeah. One of the books... It had a Von Hensdorf reproduction from the Olympic Games in 36. No kidding. Yeah. Medium close-up of the guy winning the marathon. It's incredible. It's absolutely freaky. What do you mean? Well, it's so stark. Andre, the guy's on his feet all right. But with the bright sun and the way the shadows are, you'd swear he was really... dead. Welcome hey. to the House of Horror. Oh, <laughs> what the hell's going on? Yeah, I mean, the agency wouldn't even tell us. Yeah, I wanted to surprise you. And give me a worst case of jitters? Oh, no, <laughs> just put an edge in your performance. Oh, oh you what's like it going to be? Uh, home movies for vampires? <laughs> All right, the set's a haunted sorority house. Oh, oh charming. You three are college roommates, hey, right? Sounds like a spread for Sears. A couple of ghosts haunt the place. Gee, uh -huh. and I was scared before I came. Oh, come on, what's the job for? A book cover. Well, I like reading. A <laughs> grotesque novel called House of Horror. Oh, well, hey. I always wanted to be a cover girl on a gothic novel. Oh, right. Yeah. Have to do more than just stand around looking gorgeous this time, well, girls. What is the boss? Tap dance? No, act. <laughs> it's a horror story. A well-paying one. Yeah. All right, let's get professional here. <laughs> I knew it was going to be one of those days. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, okay, okay. The three of you share a room, right? Uh -huh. It's late. Uh-huh. You ready for bed? How late is it? Uh, Susie, <laughs> in a bed and pick up the book. Okay. Barbara, you're at the desk typing. Typing, typing. Will 20 words a minute get me the job? Kim, stand at the window peering out. Oh, yes. Like the Steve, garden. check the fan. It's all set. Yeah. Mic unloaded? Haven't touched it. Uh, could you crawl over and check it, please? You bet I could, boss. You just did well, All right, these positions look good, kids. Hang on to them. Okay, Steve, hit the music. Okay. Oh, looks good, Kim. Looks good. Keep staring out the window. But cheat a little toward the camera. Open your night down a bit. Is this, hey, is this book to be sold in a plain brown wrapper? Yeah, and hide my cover. Kim, uh, you've just seen something out the window that's alarmed you. Mm -hmm. right, good, you good. need to fan on the curtains? Break my concentration again and I'll lead into assistance, Steve. Kim, raise your arms. You're, uh, you're pushing something away. React. Good, good. Now, Barbara and Susie can feel some, uh, hideous presence. Steve, now you can hit the fan. All right, the wind's howling outside. Something ghastly is coming through the window. You're all trapped, terrified. Come on, let's see some terror. Susie, clutch your throat. Look horrified. Come on, you can do better than that. Feel it. Feel it. Hey, Andre, Susie's not used to your subtle technique. Subtle be damned. That phantom from the window is going to kill you. Philippe here. Oh, yeah, this is a recording. Sorry I can't chat with you in person, but I'll be in the studio again shortly. If you'd like to leave a message, please add it after the tone. Here it comes. Who got this film? The fools! Would I get a recorded message? <laughs> Let's get back at it. Okay, All right, we got the job covered. The rest is gravy. All right, back to your places. Yeah. Go that bog and lift that bay. And we're off. Okay, girls, I'm coming at you from 50 feet. 
You're feeling something, but you don't quite know what it is. But a presence. Uh, you feel an evil presence in the room. You stir. Yeah. And, and that's it, Barbara. Yeah. Protect yourself. Good, good. Okay, it's cooking, girls. Uh -huh. Cooking. Kim, why don't you... Like this? Oh, damn. I'm on my way, Bob. Get some more film. Oh, uh, girl, girls, hold your places. Okay. Steve. I'm coming. You got anything loaded? No, I don't. How about the Von Hensdorf? Come on, Steve. Well, while I'm loading the Nike. Hang on a second. Here. You got it? Yeah. Okay, girls, you're on. That's oh. it, Susie. Oh, the camera's enough to scare anyone. Quiet. Keep the concentration. Okay. The camera's getting louder because it's getting closer and more menacing. Oh. Jesus. Oh. It gets heavier every shot. Uh, Kim. Kim, I'm coming to get you first. Oh. You try to scream, oh. but your throat's frozen. Look around for help. A weapon. Oh. Terrific. I'm coming for you, Kim. Oh. At last, you scream for help. Oh. Scream. Oh. No! Oh. Louder, Kim. Louder! Oh. Oh. There's no escape. You want to run, but you can't. The camera's hypnotized you. There's no way out. I can't! Barbara, oh. Oh. pick up the phone and call for help. Oh. After I get Kim, I'm coming for you. There's no escape, is there? Steve, more shadows. Knock out all the lights except for number five. I'm coming closer, girls, and the camera's getting louder. Every shot you hear is a gunshot. You only have a few seconds before I reach you. Seconds, girls, before Kim dies. And Barbara, and then Susie. <laughs> Shut up, Steve-O. Come on, girls. Try to make a run for it. Susie, you're the closest to the door, but you can't, can you? The camera's got you, too, hasn't it? Try, Susie. Try to open the door. I can't open it. I really can't open it. Try to open it. The door won't open. And I've got all of you. God, what happened? No, I think Susie's faded. Oh, God, I feel woozy myself. Uh, hit, hit the light, Steve, will you? And get some brandy. Right. It's pretty weird. And stuff. that's it, girls. We'll stop. Yeah, oh, Susie, honey, can you sit up? Yeah, I'll try. Okay. Oh, Andre? Yeah? I can't breathe, man. It's like something's choking. Choking me. Should I call, like, a, a doctor? You all look pretty green. Hang on, Steve. They're just hyper, okay? Now, come on, girls. Get it together. Oh, well, sure. You just don't know when to stop, do you? Oh, my head. Here you go, Susie. Drink it. Drink it up, honey. What happened to us? Um, I guess you all got too involved. Don't yeah, man, especially you. <laughs> okay, I guess I get carried away there, too. I've, I've still got the chills. It's like a, a, a ghost really did come into the room. Yeah, and when I tried to open the door, I really did feel something pulling at me. Oh, yeah, freak. It was just like that camera wasn't going to let us go until it was through with us. I know what you mean. What the hell happened? <gasps> Meanwhile, we still got that deadline for Monday. Hmm. Let's find out what we got. I'm on my way, boss. Uh, hang on. Better check the phone machine, see if the clients are restless. Uh, then phone out for some supper, huh? Right. And I'll make some more coffee. Right. Yeah, it's Paul Gemmell, Andre. Uh, I thought I'd better tell you to give your number to a guy who came into the shop today, a collector. Name is uh, Felix Rupp. Seems okay. Kind of uh, eccentric. <laughs> but there's probably good bucks in it for the camera. Von Hensdorf, if you can see your way to selling it. He uh, claims the camera's stolen. He's got some papers to prove it. Anyway, he'll uh, probably be calling. There's uh, no way out of it, eh? Take care and uh, get back to me if you... Got this bit What the hell was that? Beats me. Something in German. Yeah, I know, but what about Paul? He sounded pretty nervous. Ah, that's just Paul. But that... Could have been the collector there after Paul's call. Charming personality. Yeah, really knows how to set up a business relationship. Yeah. Well, uh, we got work to do. It's almost quarter to five. Uh, 
How many rolls we go through today? Uh, Sixteen. And then the one in the Von Hensdorf. Right. Mm, looks like we'll have to crash here tonight, okay? You're the boss. You want to uh, run it down in shooting order? No. Let's do the Von Hensdorf stuff first. Must be the girls. Come on in, doors open. Good afternoon. Are you Andrew Phillips? Yes. Uh, that is, I'm uh, I'm Andre Philippe, professional handler. I'm Detective O'Hara. And this is Sergeant Connors. I'm double parked again. Do you know Barbara Wilkins, Kim Andrews, and Susan Slatton? Yes, I do. Why do you want to know? They're dead. Oh my I God. can't believe it. All three of them were killed late yesterday afternoon. Uh, how? All three in traffic accidents. Impossible. They didn't even travel together. They died in three different accidents in separate parts of the city at roughly the same time. Incredible. Traffic division found that all three women worked for the Fabulous Faces Modeling Agency? Yes. And they'd all been booked by you? Yes, yesterday afternoon. Uh, why, why are you... We're with the Homicide Division. But... You said traffic well, yeah, I'll, uh, I'll try to explain. Barbara Wilkins was riding her bicycle down Orchard Street yesterday afternoon at 4.45. Light was red when she got to the intersection at Brighton Avenue. Several bystanders called out to her to stop, but she didn't seem to pay any attention. She just kept right on going right through the light and uh, straight into an oncoming truck. I see. And Susie? And Kim? Kim Andrews was driving her car on Front Street near the train yard at about 4.45. Freight train was approaching, the crossing lights were flashing, the gates were down, but she paid no attention. The whistle blared, but it was too late to stop the train. She, uh, she drove right into it. God! I just can't believe it. And at 4.45 yesterday, Susan Slatton walked into the King Street subway station, only a block from here. She paid her fare, walked through the turnstile, down the stairs, and before 30 witnesses, stepped in front of the northbound train. The three women were here yesterday? Yes. What time? They arrived together at 2. And left? About 4.30. Together when they left as well? As far as the door, anyway. Hey, do you know any of the girls' phone numbers, addresses? Well, uh, they're probably uh, pinned up somewhere. You're running a photography business? Yes, and it was a strictly professional relationship with all three. Yeah, did you hire them directly? Never. Always booked them through the agency. Oh. And they were photographed yesterday? They were. What kind of photographs? Fashion? No, it was a book cover. Anything unusual? No skin, no pornography, just fiction. Full color wraparound. I see. Mm-hmm. Nothing out of the ordinary? Look, it was straight ahead, all the way. Well, anyone uh, assisting you? Yes, my regular... I'm his assistant, Stephen Balfour. Mm, how would you describe what you do, Mr. Balfour? Well, it's technical, mostly. Lighting, cameras, special effects, mm -hmm. <laughs> going for coffee. <laughs> Were you here for the whole session? I was, yes. Mr. Philippe, could we see the pictures you took yesterday? Of course. Right, right here. They look scared to death. Well, they were supposed to be. The title of the book is House of Horrors. I see. Can we take a few of these with us? Uh, sure. Are either of you, uh, diabetic? What? what? No, no. no. Oh, do you know if any of the girls were diabetic? Medical histories I don't have. Only their measurements. What has being diabetic got to do with, uh, the girl's condition? Possible insulin overdose? How would you describe the three women... Uh, what state were they in when they left here? Exhausted. It was a tough session. And that they put a lot into it. Were they emotionally upset? I suppose they were, from exhaustion. Do any of them have a heart condition? I don't have access to medical secrets. How could they have heart trouble all in their 20s? Look, this is a professional studio. We work with proper safeguards. Everyone's covered by insurance. And I don't understand this game of 20 medical questions. We're not sure that the girls died from traffic injuries. Pathology reports back on two of them. Anders and Slatten both suffered heart attacks before the accident. What? But how? I mean, what could have... Various possibilities, all of them puzzling. 
Now, if there's no history of heart disease and that's being checked out, they might have suffered heart attacks from an overdose on insulin or drugs. Now, wait a minute. None of those kids were on dope. You're sure? All those tight close-ups and I wouldn't notice crazy eyes? Never saw a trace of the stuff. Uh, I, I don't work that way. I want the truth in the face, and you don't shoot at glaze. Yeah, Mr. Philippe, we're not here in a drug race. Well, I'm relieved. But I think I need some legal advice. I think that's all for the moment, Mr. Philippe. Unfortunately, we have to treat this case as a homicide until the real causes of death are determined. Witnesses to all three accidents said the girls looked stricken, as if they were drugged. One said Miss Slatton's skin was blue, as if she was dead before she jumped. Why didn't you tell them more about the session, man? Those girls were pretty sick when they left. I don't know. Scared, I guess. Look, uh, Andre, I'm not the most logical person around here, but uh, I think that camera had something to do with it. It's just a horrible coincidence. I'm not so sure. Remember that shot from the 36 Olympics? The marathon winner? Yeah. Well, in the caption, it said he died the day after the race. That's crazy. Is it? Well, how do you explain it then, man? I know my coffee's pretty awful, but uh, there's nothing in it except coffee. Steve, it's just a camera. It makes a lot of racket, and the noise shook up the girls, and that's all. That's all. Well, what else have we got to go on? What about the shots themselves? Well, we both know where the best ones came from, don't we? Yeah. The ones the cops chose came from that bunch, didn't they? Yeah. And now comes the fun part. What do you mean? Exactly when did we start to develop those shots? About, uh, quarter to five. Why? <gasps> oh, my God. Oh, my God, Steve, I can't afford to buy that. There's got to be something else. <gasps> oh, uh, j just leave it. Yeah, it's on record. But it could be... Yeah, the crowd, I know. Uh... Let's see if he leaves his number. But he could know something. Maybe he... Exactly. But we don't know that. You're the boss. Meanwhile, there's only one way we can know for sure, isn't there? What do you mean? Steve, I want you to set that thing up and take my picture. You have just heard Deadly Developments by Arlene Ezrin. Featured tonight were John Stocker as Andre and Gordon Thompson as Steve, with Bud Knapp as Paul and Sandy Webster as the mysterious Felix. The models were played by Linda Sorensen, Elva May Hoover, and Nikki Guadani. And Colin Fox and Arch McDonald played Detective O'Hara and Sergeant Connors. Our recording engineer is John Jessup, with the sound effects of Bill Robinson. Our production assistant is Doris Buchanan, and the series script editor is Earl Toppings. Nightfall is produced and directed for CBC Radio by Bill Howell. We ask is that your pose be natural. The play by Arlene Esrin is called Deadly Developments. Morning, Paul. Hi, Andre. By the way, it's afternoon. Uh -huh. Late session last night. More frisky models. <laughs> anyway, I'm glad you dropped in. Sure, sure. If you don't, I was coming. Had to close the store? <laughs> well, I would and I wouldn't. I, uh, want to show you something. What you got there? Uh, don't rush me, don't rush me. All right, you tell me what it is. Hmm. I'd Europe. You ever see any results? Pictures? No, but I'd sure like to. 
This machine's a classic. Listen to the boy who took photo arts. <laughs> uh, Paul, maybe we can... Hold it, Andre. I got a business here. Mm, what's it worth, Paul? Well, I don't really know. Trying it out in tomorrow's ad for six fifty. What? In tomorrow's paper? Yeah. Uh, six fifty, eh? Yeah. What if it's rusted tight? Try it out. Huh, it's like a steel trap. Yeah. I wonder how it shoots. You want to make a deal? Sure. Well, as long as it's in good working condition, okay? Okay. But mechanics only. What do you mean? There's no guarantee on the pictures. <laughs> I'm in here. Right. What are you into? Prints. The car layout, remember yesterday? Oh, yeah. 35 mil. It's heavy. Real antique. European? You're getting warm. German. <laughs> hey. It's not a von Hansdorf. Oh, you took a little camera history, did you? Pre-war, one of the greatest cameras ever made. Jeez, it's built like a tank. Yeah, it built them to last. I haven't had time to test it yet. Where the hell did you get it? The guy brought it in yesterday, right off the street. Said he found it in the basement in a house he just moved into, a, in a trunk. Oh, yeah? Did you check it out? With the cops, yeah. It's clean. That's weird. It's surprising to find one outside. In the dream, you are falling. Lost in the listening distance as dark locks in. <laughs> Nightfall. Good evening. Tonight we have our cameras loaded and our studio lit for a special session. Or 